Hello and welcome to a new lecture in linguistics. And today's lecture is about word associations. Here we go. This is a paper I conducted several years ago and it's the second paper in your course, linguistics. I'm very happy to talk about it today. Uh, its title is Word Associations in English and Arabic, Putting the Cognitive and the Cultural Together. Before talking about the uh, the paper and uh, the, its details, I want to give you some background knowledge about the field of word associations just to understand this field and to be able to head uh, and move forward with the paper later on. Uh, here we go. Yes. Um, an introduction to word associations. As you see, uh, words are connected and they do not live alone and there must be some sort of associations and connections that are so detailed as we're gonna see. Yes. Uh, first, what is word association? And uh, you, you you can say it's a, it's a game, it could be a, a therapy, it could be a lot of things, but let me give you an example first. When you head to the kitchen to make a cup of tea, usually and uh, of course and uh, unconsciously activate many things. For example, the names of the needed ingredients and objects, uh, sugar, tea, kettle, hot water, um, cup. Uh, you also may recall many uh, loaded concepts and metaphorical words and expressions such as heat, joy, relaxation, um, spouse, friend. You may also recall in your, or, uh, words such as pain, uh, when you um, recall words such um, pain of the burn that you uh, still leaving a scar on your, on your hands when your brother accidentally spilled hot water on you the other week. You may also recall or remember your mother and how many times she has been warning you against drinking too much tea. Uh, you know, you will, um, for example, you may um, recall uh, uh, something you have to finish, a task that you have to finish in order to meet a deadline. You recall and remember so many things, dozens and dozens of things. When you think of the, of something, what does this mean? It means that we um, we do not think in uh, separate words. No words are. Uh, each word is uh, making a frame, a bundle, a network of ideas, related ideas and related words. So, for example. When you see uh, when the word classroom is mentioned, you recall a study a lot of things regarding the teachers, the students, the subject matters, the schools, the courses, the examinations, the grades, um, uh, the results, and a lot of things. So words are not words are stored in our minds in the f form of frames. Frame, you know what? It or a frame where one word is related to a lot of words which are connected in order to make uh, this frame. If you, for example, recall the word uh, football, you remember a lot of things. You remember players, the referees, crowds, goals, um, let's say uh, victories, uh, defeats, um, uh, you know. Um, VAR, uh, you know, uh, penalties, uh, um, and, and cups, uh, competitions, uh, FIFA, uh, you know, some Muhammad Salah, for example, a lot of things. So each word is a bundle of, of related words. It, it, it doesn't exist in reality and in our brains alone. It must be connected to other words, making fields of knowledge or making frames and we act according to this. This is very important for us in order to act. We cannot deal with words separately. This is why words are associated in order to make frames and domains called semantic uh, fields.
okay? And they, they, this is, they connect together by making neural binding, neural connections that make, uh, allow them to make circuits the way we make some sort of connection and network words in our brain, okay? Uh, word association, what's it? It's a test, you know. Sometimes it's used as a test, sometimes it's used as a game, as a therapy, a lot of things uh, we're going to talk about later on. But the basic word association game is extremely uh, simple. It requires two players, one whose task is to call out or uh, show s a single word, and a second uh, whose task is to respond to these words with the first pay attention, first word that comes into his or her mind. So what's word association? Word association has to do with mentioning what comes to your mind when you hear or you read a particular uh, stimulus word. You know, understand? When I ask you to uh, give me what are the words that come to your mind when the word, uh, when the word mother is mentioned, you will give lots of words, for example, love, authority, giving, uh, care, um, you know, um, uh, money, warmth, uh, um, so many things that can uh, uh, come, come uh, to you at once, to your mind at once when you, um, when this word uh, comes to you. This applies to all, uh, all words. So this is what we we call word association. So what's word association? It's a play, it's a game, it's a test, it's whatsoever. And it, it, it goes this way, you read and complete word as what, what do you think of when you hear something? What comes to your mind when you hear something or you read something or you think of something? This is what we call word associations. Here's also another form how people uh, get uh, tested you uh, in in this uh, word association test you know uh, there are no right yeah let me uh, see what's there yes um people are asked to uh, to write what uh, get, comes to their mind the first word that comes to their mind when a particular word is mentioned and of course people are uh, instructed uh, that uh, it, there is no right or wrong answers. For example, here, the word uh, abuse, what comes to your mind here, the word a child, agenda, plan. No, you know, uh, this, this is so personal. If you give this test to another person, uh, he may come up with other words totally different, which make the semantic network uh, that is there in his brain regarding this word. So each one of us has his own or her own semantic network regarding a particular word. Okay? Yes, and what we come up with uh, is uh, look, l looking like that. It's, a, it's a, you know, a network, Shabaka Minil Kalimet, network of words. For example, if I ask you, this is a stimulus word, what comes to your mind when the word star is mentioned, or you read it, or you hear it, whatsoever, or you think of it? Okay. Um, this is a, a group of words which are um, provided by someone. As a word star, look at the words here, the word obscure, you know, a uh, word bright, you know, bright star. Uh, we have glitter, words we, stars are glittering in the sky. Pillion, we have pillion and pillions of stars. Stars, we do not know what's the exact number. Stars are there in the universe, making the universe and galaxies. Was there a word galaxy here? Yeah, galaxy is here. Yeah, it must be here. And twinkle, cluster, you know, uh, uh, stars cluster in order to make orbits. Is there? Yeah, there is orbit here. Where stars shine. Also, this, this, we can also have words such as Hollywood. Because we have movie stores, Hollywood, uh, the cinema industry um, hub, which uh, uh, give uh, prominence and uh, stardom to lots of, of, of actors and actresses worldwide. And uh, movie, you see, and radiance, and moon, and brilliance. Yeah, someone who's very brilliant in something is called a star, you know. 
physics store, medicine store, whatsoever, sky ray, all these words, uh, you know, astronomy, all these words are related to the word star. So the word star has this associations, word associations. Okay? Words related to this word. Okay? Making this network, this network. It could be, there, there could be many, many other words, you know? And if I give you uh, the word star, you may come up with other words. So, uh, the uh, word association network is so s uh, special, so personal, and so individual. Yes, here is a, a word association uh, uh, related to the word Muslim, for example. Look at the words. Here um, we find that radical uh, is associated with the word Muslim, the word Islamic, the word immigrant, you know. Many and many Muslims in, in, in European countries and you know are immigrants, descending from immigrants, you know, immigrant uh, parents. We have uh, also Muslim debate, stage, insight, cultural, you know, second activists. All these words are related to Muslim center, Muslim center, Islamic centers, Islamophobia, rad Islamophobia, fear from Muslims, uh, radicalization. Um, we have also practice. We uh, have a, a mainstream and, and so many things. So uh, when we, uh, words that are associated, Muslim associations. I, is this, uh, uh, you know, um, applying to all people? Of course not. Uh, everyone, uh, if we ask him or her, uh, what comes to your mind where the word the Muslim is mentioned, they may come up with other words, you know. But, you know, uh, what I want to show you is that every word uh, 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 is there in our mind associated with other words. Uh, this association is so personal, so deeply involved, deeply um, and profoundly uh, uh, marking our uh, our uh, cognitive and our mental activities, and it is shaped by, by our experience. Let me know word association regarding any word is shaped by our experience, by our world knowledge, by our culture, by our biases, expectations, by our uh, fears. You know, lot lots of things. So this is why associations and our uh, word association is. So so personal, as I told you before. Why were the associations a matter? Why were the associations a matter? It's important, yes. Number one, they are useful for literary critics, writers, journalists, linguists, sociologists, market researchers, advertising managers, and for many, many people in order to know uh, more about language and in order to know about the world because our word association reflect a lot about our language, our linguistic knowledge, uh, how deep is our linguistic knowledge, how our vocabulary, our lexical knowledge, our, uh, our culture, our, uh, you know, our, uh, our heritage, how do we see the world, lots of things people know about us when we provide uh, the uh, word associations, uh, our word associations regarding a particular word. And number two, it's a tool uh, for exploring the construction of the lexical mental uh, network. We have something called the mental lexicon, where we store our lexical or our words, our, you know, in general. Seemingly, no one contests that some information about the strong types of association are revealed by learners' current knowledge, okay? And uh, number three, it's a procedure for investigating how word meanings are stored in our memory, in our network, in our mental network, lexical network, lexical, uh, mental lexicon, كل الحاجات دي بنقدر نعرف إحنا عاملين إزاي عن طريق الورد أسوشيشن Also we can learn more about cultures yeah, if you want to know more about the, cu the culture of a particular person, you can 
يو كان يو نو تراي ذيس تيست جرب الاختبار ده قول له وات كمز تو يور مايند وان كذا 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 يو نو اسوسيشنز ذات هي از جوينج تو جيف او هير يعني هي شي از جوينج تو جيف ويل بي يوز از ا جلمس انتو ا ويندو انتو ذا كلتشر of this person the brain of this person this why word associations are very very important mental lexicon now we go to uh, our uh, our brains uh, and to see that uh, the br uh, our mental lexicon we store words in it all the words we know uh, 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 whether we use them and or we do not use them. We have to differentiate between active vocabulary, كلمات اللي احنا بنعرفها يا جماعة. إما تبقى active vocabulary or passive vocabulary. Active vocabulary is um, word has to do with words which we know and use. And a passive words which we know but we do not use because each one of us has um, a number of words which are so active so active usually using them repeatedly repeatedly you know uh, and we uh, we um, uh, store words and of course words have semantic relations they have syntactic relations and uh, we have also store we also wor store word forms for example uh, nouns uh, adjectives uh, plural singular etc and semantic uh, how words are related what semantic um, it has to do with meaning how words which have similar meaning are related to each other what are the semantic and the lexical relations also syntactic words acting as verbs words acting as adjectives words acting acting as nouns how do we uh, we construct sentences uh, and the syntax uh, the the rules that govern the structure of our sentences and according to a number of rules oh, and of course we know these rules before going to school something innate in us so uh, w when we learn a particular word, we, when we store in our mental lexicon a particular word, we store it, we store its pronunciation, we store its meaning, we store its association, its linkage or uh, its connection to other words. We store its grammatical function, how it appears in sentences. We store lots and lots and lots of things, okay? We store also its uh, literal meanings, its uh, metaphorical meanings, and so on. Mental lexicon, here is a picture. Uh, simplify, simulation, you know, the mission that's happening. No, we simulate, we add it, that's what's happening. If you look at the word animal, for example, uh, you know, how do we, uh, as human beings, store, store, like we're the admin, how do we store the world around us, contain the world around us? Uh, you know, the, the world is, uh, is so vast, the is so vast and so big, and we try to contain it in our small skull. We want to contain this universe. How can we do that? We do that by two things. Number one, uh, categorization, and number two, classification. We have uh, to categorize it, we have a category in our mind uh, to animals, and animals have uh, subcategories. Uh, to we have categories for emotions, we have categories for human beings, we have categories for objects, categories for gases, categories for uh, let's say uh, places, categories for actions, uh, you know, for activities, categories in our mind, you know, in our brain for everything. And we do that through a type of called prototype. You know, out of mass and uh, categories for uh, plants, uh, categories for trees. And, and I have an idealist or a mental copy for each m for, for, for each member of these categories, stored in our mind. So when I see a tree, I make a match between the tree, the mental tree, 
you know, in my mind and the tree outside. If in and when matching happens, then I understand that I see a tree, not a, for example, a ball, not a, a an animal, etc. Okay, back to this image, we have animal. Um, you have uh, what are the characteristics? What are the features of each category? Araf al animal meaning in the way it eats, uh, it breathes, it can move. Okay, and as you see, animals could be uh, birds, could be fish, birds. Uh, how can I know birds? Uh, features, you know, features. One of them, a bird uh, has uh, wings, has uh, feathers, can fly, etc. The, these are the idealistic, the prototype uh, features of bird. How about, for example, a bird such as penguin, penguin, or kiwi? Do they fly? They do not. They have wings, yeah. They have feathers, but they do not fly. But can we say that penguins are not birds? They are. But we can say that they are not the ideal members, the prototype members of the word bird. Okay, so what we com what comes to your mind when the word bird is mentioned? Even Arabic, for example, asfura. In American, it's robin. So it depends. For and Robin, this is the ideal. Be be got fee. All the things. it has uh, wings. Tamim. It has feathers. And uh, reach. Tamim. It can fly. Tamim. Three things. Montabuqin. Okay. Okay. But this is not the case in in other uh, in other birds. They are penguins. They match of now. They are cubo, which is an a bird in uh, in in Australia and in New Zealand. Oh, uh -huh. okay. A bird such as here, a canary. Canary is yellow and can sing. Come in, yani, uh, uh, other additional, you know, other uh, or additional features. So we can have birds which can sing, but not all birds can sing. Okay, penguin can swim. Yeah, what's great? That's great, you know. So, so some birds can swim, such as penguin, but it can fly. Does this mean that penguins are, are not birds? They are, but they are not the best. Example we can offer, okay. Uh, here, if you look at um, fish, for example, it has uh, 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 gels. It has it can swim. It has fins. Okay, shark, big and eats meat. Salm salmon uh, is pink and is edible. You understand? So this is how our mental lexicon is organized. Is organized. Words are organized along with features and the subcategories, categories. So we organize the world according to categories. We have a category uh, for animals and sub and, and sub uh, categories under it for birds and and we have uh, an, another category for for plants for objects for humans for you know lots 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 all the categories even for emotions you know and so on activities uh, and so on okay yeah let's go into our brain and we have this very important uh, statement which says neurons that fire together wire together this is said by the great and prominent neuropsychologist Donald Hepp. You know, what does this uh, mean? But first, uh, let me tell you that our brain is made up of, n of billions and billions and billions of neurons. And each neuron is carrying uh, some sort of knowledge, you know. And as you see, uh, this is our brain and the areas of the brain are firing. You know, this is means that the, uh, our brain is always in a um, in a mode of uh, of activity, always doing work, uh, functioning all the time, even during our uh, sleeping hours. Um, you know, it never stop working. And uh, as you see, um, this is how some neurons uh, fire, and when they fire. As according to Donald Hepp, when they fire, when two nodes or two words fire together, they f wire, wire, they connect, make connection, a neural connection. They fire, each, neu each, each uh, neuron 
uh, is made up of a number of cells and uh, connected to other neurons by something called synapses, which uh, is called the neural uh, pathway. Uh, and uh, um, uh, this is uh, uh, making what we call a network. So words uh, uh, are uh, firing, and when they fire together, they make connection. Wire here means make connection, and they connect or uh, get associated with one another. Okay, so for example, if we say the word Hina, uh, let's say the word uh, um, time and the word money, for example. So every time I, I, uh, um, I associate, I you know, let's just say activate the word uh, time, I activate the word also uh, money. So both time and money uh, fire together. And then uh, through uh, this, they wire, they get connected, they establish a pathway, a neural pathway. So every time we mention time, we mention money. So it's why people say time is money. Time is money. Okay, let me give you another example. The concepts or words which happen to fire together would wire together, okay? And uh, this stimulus firing and wiring would be reinforced by repetition. So every time you mention time, you mention money. Time, money. For better, if I'm a metaphor, smart time is money. Time is money, or time talk, uh, or ta money talks, and so on. The simultaneous firing and wiring would be reinforced by repetition, repetition, repetition. And the more you repeat the firing of two words, يعني the activation of two words, لما تعمل تنشيط لتو words على طول يحصل connection تاني with both ways اللي ما بينهم to be established and they fire together because they wire together. Um, okay, consequently, the, t uh, the next time you, uh, a particular word is activated, the same bundle of associated concepts fire too, and the instant pathways are established. Let me give you an example. And I'm going to take example. If what comes to your mind when you see a photo of Muhammad Salah is Liverpool, I'll give you a picture of Muhammad Salah, and I ask you what comes to your mind, you'll say Liverpool. Okay, this means that the two concepts, Muhammad Salah and Liverpool, fire together. Be gulak ma baad ala tool, be activated together and wire together. They make connections. There was a lot between the neural networks between them. The strong associations is definitely nourished by repetition. So every time I mention Liverpool, you 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 remember or you recall Muhammad Salah. Every time I recall Muhammad Salah, you recall Liverpool and so on because Muhammad Salah as a concept or a word and Liverpool as a concept or a word fire together activate together making uh, wiring but establishing uh, neural uh, pathways and they connect and make this word association so therefore every time you see the stimulus or follow uh, of Muhammad Salah you activate the uh, response word lever Bull. Okay, so what happens is that words which fire together, uh, activated at the same time, uh, wire together, and this activation uh, is deepened and deepened by time and by repetition and so on. They become very established and very solid. Let's have another thing. Uh, yes, this is an illustration of um, of ideas uh, or uh, nodes or concepts or words before firing. And this is when they fire uh, together. Here we have a pathway, a pathway, neural pathway, you know. This is neurons, this is, uh, you know, uh, uh, how they, uh, they act uh, and how this is... Um, you can say synapses, we say more about an away nucleus when synapses and so on, and how uh, uh, concepts are wired together so they are activated together and at the same time and connection between them gets so solid and so strong. So you, when you mention one of them, the other is already recalled and you and also mentioned, okay? or or remembered or retrieved or whatsoever okay and here we have a very nice word um 
uh, let's read words firing at the same time and the wires together a result physically connecting when neurons neurons you look at this neurons are firing at the same time this sends a signal that the two areas or group of neurons are responding to the same information source and the two areas or, or clusters should meet Muhammad Salah and Liverpool okay now connected okay should meet neurons become becoming friends they become uh, friends uh, nodes ideas neurons after responding to the same stimuli neurons which um, for example fire when i say muhammad salah and uh, other neurons which fire when i say liverpool they become friends after this association Muhammad Salah and uh, and Liverpool N neurons responding uh, together they become friends later on because they respond to the same stimuli stimuli they respond to the same stimuli or to the same stimulus word okay and uh, how words are associated uh, uh, the or the words uh, the word associations are are related we have two important uh, dimensions okay two axes uh, for example we have syntagmatic relation which is a type of semantic relations um, between words that co occur in the same sentence or text for example the ridiculous girl fell into the bond which are put horizontally as you see they share what we call syntagmatic relations they are they come in a sequence okay next to each other okay the ridiculous ridiculous girl okay ridiculous comes before the word girl and fell into and so on this is they are uh, you know relating to each other horizontally horizontally you know in a sequence with the table okay but here this is called what syntagmatic words also can be related to one another through another dimension which a vertical one which is called the paradigmatic paradigmatic what's paradigmatic it's a choice so instead of saying ridiculous silly foolish funny crazy and so on so what's the relationship between silly and ridiculous it's syntagmatic it's a paradigmatic relationship because they can replace one another what's the relationship between girl and person and woman and lady and princess and child each one each one of them can replace girl so it's a matter of a choice, either or. You know, let's read. Paradigmatic relation is a different type of semantic relations between words that can be substituted with another word in the same category. Here, ridiculous. This is uh, the category of adjectives. So we can replace it uh, by any another, by another any other adjective. The same thing, girl. Oh, it's a noun. It can be replaced by any other noun. You see, so words are grouped or associated in terms of two major dimensions, horizontal, which is the syntagmatic, and the second vertical, which is uh, the paradigmatic. It's system. The system is based on sequence, and then at the table, syntagmatic or choice, you know, which is paradigmatic, okay? ده ازاي احنا هنقدر نجيب الكلمات اللي خلاص جمعناها على يعني particular word and then have to know how in what way they are related okay uh, we have also words which uh, um, uh, we, we should know that they are uh, related to one another by means of lexical relations for example uh, we have uh, synonymy words which have similar meanings such as conceal and hide antonomy words which have opposite meanings such as shallow and deep we have hyponomy uh, words which uh, you know it's a, a sort of uh, hierarchical relationship for example daffodil and flower flower is a hibernum and uh, 
uh, and daffodil is the uh, hyponymy because it's uh, uh, flower comes before um, or, or at the top of daffodil because we have a other forms or, or other kinds of flowers such as rose, uh, such as tulip and, and so on. So these are lex lexical relations. فإحنا لما نشوف ال word associations الكلمات اللي هي بن ب we recall uh, if, uh, when we uh, when a particular word is mentioned or we hear a particular word or we see uh, or we think of a particular thing, uh, we can uh, investigate the relationship in terms of uh, some lexical relationships such as synonymy, antonymy, and hyponymy. وممكن برضو نقدر نشوفهم عن طريق ال paradigmatic and syntactic relationships okay طبعا ندرس كل الكلام ده but this just to put you into context برضو how words are related in our mental lexicon we have synonymy uh, when words are uh, related by means of similarity uh, in meaning we have antonymy the notion of our semantic oppositeness uh, we have uh, and it's classified into many kinds for example we have uh, Complementary, uh, complementarity, uh, which uh, in words such as male and female, we have converseness. Words such as husband and wife, we have incompatibility, uh, such as uh, let's say for example days of the week, uh, antonymy such as hot and and cold, hyponymy. Yeah, hyponymy uh, refers to lexical uh, relationship existing between a specific and general lexical items. For example, um, we have, as we see in the uh, words such as uh, roses and tulips, which are co-hyponyms to the um, hypernym uh, a flower. We have also a mironomy, um, uh, which uh, refers to a part whole relationship, uh, such as uh, in the case of tree, we have branch, we have root, a uh, branch and root being co metonyms. They belong to the uh, the root to the uh, word the tree because they are parts of a whole. You understand? Um, uh, with this, we come to the end of this uh, lecture. But before we go, I want you to get you back to um, the first slide. Yes, the beginning, first slide. Yes. Uh, look at this, uh, the word coffee and the word what comes to your mind when the word coffee is mentioned you see this let's let's do this it's a task what comes to your mind when when the word coffee is mentioned uh, these are words which um, subjects or people have mentioned uh, as you see we can see the word mug cup grind cafe we have iced tea is teabot, a kettle, a dark, black. Uh, we have also, um, uh, it's related to, all these are words related to coffee. And then uh, we have the word drink, and uh, we drink uh, uh, coffee. What, what are the words that are associated with the word drink? We have beverage, refreshment, we have coke, we have water. And then the word water also has a number of associated words such as filter, liquid, drinks, pour, jug, drip, canteen, and so on. And then we move to uh, ice cream, Malena Masala. We find that it's um, related to vanilla and dessert, and that then leads us to chocolate, with coffee and chocolate you know, um, and uh, are related to some extent, uh, coca, or co coca, yeah, and uh, hot, and uh, and then we have also a coffee pot, brown, and the coffee pot, we have other words related to it, for example, wake up, coffee pot, the morning, daybreak, for the break, 
awake to awaken them to make them alert يخليهم مصحصحين برضو we have the word chocolate بقى معاه بقى حاجات كتير برضو cookies biscuits uh, muffin cake and then also we have the word late نلاقي بقى مربوط بيه the word tardy early عكسه early ده بقى الكلام اللي احنا قلنا عليه synonymy و antonymy هنلاقيه والكلام ده كله warm اوكي وي هاف كام في ويفر وينتر حاجات كلها يعني ورم او كوكيز ناكلها يبقى في هوت شوكليت في بناكلها نشربه اكتر في الوينتر اند سو اون اند سو فور يو نو اتس ا نت ورك اوف يو نو فاست نت ورك اوف ووردز ويتش ار ريليتد تو ون انذر يو ماي اسك وات از ذا دايركت ريليشن شيب بيتوين فور اكزامبل ذا وورد دراج هير at the bottom here and the word winter okay well, you know that we can say that each word is surrounded by a number of association uh, that uh, lead us uh, to other associations that lead us to another as to other associations that lead us to uh, to other associations and so on and so forth and there's no end to this uh, uh, network This is something so interesting. It's a mental work. It's a, a cognitive work. It tells us a lot of things about us, about our our culture, about our mental lexicon, our, about our knowledge, about our linguistic knowledge, uh, about ourselves, about our brain activities, our mental health, a lot of things. I hope that this would... Um, uh, help you be prepared for uh, our uh, discussion of the uh, paper but before going um, uh, let me uh, ask you to join me in this practice finally dear readers what crosses and dear students what crosses your minds when you hear or read the word love join me in this activity and we will be amazed Please send me by all the words that come to your mind when the word love is mentioned and you will be amazed by the responses that we generate which make a tiny part, really a tiny part of our miraculous mental lexicons and wondrous semantic memories. Thank you.